Hey, what's going on, guys? Just want to welcome you to another episode of a Time for Change Movement podcast. And we are super stoked to be jumping into Mark and we're going through it. We're kind of going to go through the whole book. Uh, it's going to take some time. But you know what, guys? Uh, one of the things that I've learned is you don't just want to rush through the Bible. Uh, I don't even know if I've read the full Bible. And I think I've been a Christian for about 17 years. But uh, it's good to kind of stop and take um, take some sections apart. And uh, so, guys, last week we spoke about uh, how Jesus crossed, uh, I believe, the Sea of Galilee to meet the man who was possessed. And he was up in the mountains and cutting himself. And what ends up happening, and you can read this uh, on your, uh, kind of on your own, uh, so I don't take up s- too much time. Uh, if you read in uh, chapter, chapter 5 of Mark, you hear basically what happens is that uh, Jesus finds out that this man is possessed by a multitude of demons, right? Possession in the sense that uh, these demons are inside of his innermost being, right? Because he, he hasn't received Jesus, so the Holy Spirit hasn't come and taken residence inside of him. So because it's a, a, there's the empty space, uh, the enemy, Satan, tries to take residence until we, again, follow Jesus. But uh, this man has a multitude of demons and they call themselves legion. And Jesus basically tells them to be quiet or shut up, which I love. Uh, And then he says, uh, they they beg him, don't cast us out. I don't know where they were begging him not to be cast out to, maybe hell or whatever. But uh, even though they're going there anyway, side note, that's stupid. But he says there's, uh, there, there was a hurt. There was like, I think thousands of pigs in the mountainside and uh what happens is they say cast us into the pigs and don't cast us out to i guess hell and so he casts us cast them to the pigs the pigs are possessed they're going crazy because that's what demons are they're just nuts they're trying to drive people things nuts and they run off of a cliff and they drown all these pigs right and so that's the thing is that uh, what we want to focus on is the fact that Jesus cast the, these demons out, this this thing called legion, these multitude of demons out into the pigs to free uh, this man who was previously cutting himself, screaming at obscenities, uh, probably running around naked. I think that says something about that. And uh, Jesus frees him. And what an amazing, amazing thing, right? Uh, some of us don't have lives that look like this guy. Uh, some of us do. And uh yeah, I hope that uh, you come to know Jesus because he will do the same for you. But what I want to focus on as we kind of had a long intro to that is that uh, in Mark 5 verse 19, I'm sorry, 18, let's go to 18. Uh, it says, as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons, these multitude of demons, This man begged Jesus that he might be with him. He wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus did not permit him. But he said to the man, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis, which I believe is the city area, how much Jesus had done for him and everyone marveled. And so what I want to do with this guys is I want to jump into the ideas what are we doing with what Jesus has done in our lives, right? So again, sometimes we get so caught up in the monotony of Christianity, uh, going to church on Sundays, going to Bible studies on Wednesdays, maybe reading a chapter in the morning and throwing on worship music on the car ride. And we forget to share uh, what God has done in our lives. We forget to share what life was like before we met Jesus, right? And what this man did was he took his, what what we would call a testimony, the testimony of what God has done in our lives. That's what Jesus wants him to do. He wants him to take what he had gone through. He wants him to go into his city, tell his family, his friends, the very ones who last week we discussed probably left him. They probably left him for, I don't know, dead, I guess. Uh, they, They may have left him Jesus says, go back to those people and go tell them what I've done for you. And so this guy goes back and he does. And and it says in verse 20, he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis in the city how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. And guys, the reality is that while, while Jesus is very much alive inside of us, he is not walking this earth like he did 2000 years ago. 
we are the hands and feet of Jesus and that we can take our testimonies, our stories of how we were before Jesus and even in the sense of how we are as we come to know Jesus and the things that he has healed us from. Again, sometimes, like I said last week, some people receive healing. Your desires change immediately, right? Uh, you don't want to do things. You don't want to, maybe you're maybe you're a big alcoholic or you are a drug addict, you are uh, an adulterer, you are addicted to pornography. We may, our desires change, right? Sometimes it happens immediately, other times it happens as we continue to walk with Jesus. And I just want to tell you, the disciples had the same situation, so you're not alone if you're still dealing with stuff. We're imperfect people and that's why we need Jesus. But we take those testimonies, we go and we tell those who we love and who we know. And maybe those we meet, the strangers that we meet, and they say, why are you like this? Uh, and we tell them about how amazing Jesus is and what he did and he heals us. And guys, I think there is so much power in your testimony. And I just want to encourage you that when people ask you, they say, why are you like this? You know, why are you so happy? You know, it could be raining out and you're smiling and you're stoked on life or, you know, you could have gotten into a car accident and you're still stoked on life. And uh, again, sometimes things happen and we're not stoked on life, but uh, it's kind of the bounce back that shows that we have our joy in Christ above the things of this world and when people ask why are you like this you say because i have jesus right he has given me and he has brought me and healed me brought me through and healed me in more ways than i could have ever understood or have done on my own and praise god because guys that is the love of god uh just we're just rushing through us um and so i just want to encourage you guys as as jesus uh again not to say that jesus didn't want him with him uh, but Jesus knew that there was there was such power in the words of this man because of what he had been through. And I believe that so many people came to know the Lord, know Jesus, know his love because of this man's testimony. I believe the same is true for your lives, uh, that people will come to know Jesus. They will come to church with you. They will come to Bible studies. They will want to pray with you or, or have you pray for them because of your lives, because of your testimony and because of your past. And and how you've been healed and set free. And it's just amazing. So I just want to encourage you guys with that. Uh, we love you uh, at a Time for Change movement. We are stoked on you. And uh, we just hope you have a great week. And we see, we'll see you guys later.